What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of Fatal Garage. I'm Josh Thornell and in today's episode we're going to be making some brake upgrades on the 639 wheel horsepower ATSV. Our brake upgrades that we decided to go with are our racing brake front rotor here uh, which is a vented and slotted rotor and then our racing brake rear rotor over here which is also a vented and slotted. Uh, you'll see on the rear brake this goes to a two-piece rotor uh, versus our OEM rotor, which is a single piece. And then our front rotor stays a, uh, a two-piece rotor, which our OEM is a two-piece rotor as well. To add to that, we're gonna add some R4S Porterfield racing pads. Uh, these are great for street and track use uh, since our owner mostly runs on the street. And then to top that off, we're also gonna add in some RBF 600 brake fluid to flush out the fluid that's already in there. I've already lifted the car. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the wheels so we can get access to the brakes. Some wheels as well will have what they call a hub ring. Uh, you will need to remove that as well since we're removing the rotor. It'll slip on the hub and kind of sit on top of the rotor. So you want to go ahead and remove this and make sure you keep this with your wheel uh, because you don't want to lose this. Now that we have the wheel and tire out of the way, first thing we want to do is remove the brake pads themselves. Uh, there is a bolt shaft here that is a 13 millimeter here on the end. We want to go ahead and undo that and then we will uh, tap out these two uh, retaining rods here. I like to use those with more or less just a punch and my helper hammer, line them up and, and tap them out. Let's go ahead and take out the pads. We want to line up our punch here and our helper hammer. Being also careful not to hit any sort of paint. Reach around and pull them from the side. You may need to squeeze in on this bracket a little bit since it's kind of like a spring clip, like so. And then pull out the bottom one. I like to grab the tabs here of the brake pad uh, and the side of the caliper. Uh, and squeeze them together to, to compress the caliper uh, back into place. Uh, before you do that, uh, make sure that you have the, the fluid cap open uh, for your fluid reservoir. Uh, that way the fluid has an easy place to go uh, when you're doing so and it makes it a lot easier. And then you can squeeze in and compress. It's kind of a slow but firm force. And then once we have room, we'll just slide it off the pad. Moving to the back side of the brake caliper, now that we remove the brake pads themselves, we want to actually remove the brake caliper from this area that way we have access to the brake rotor behind it. To do so, we need to remove these two 18 millimeter bolts. So let's go ahead and break those loose. And then we're going to actually suspend the brake caliper uh, from the spring perch up above uh, with a bungee cord to hold it in place. That way this line, which is the brake line, doesn't extend uh, too far out of the way or hurt itself. And so we're just gonna do that. And then before we go ahead and remove this top bolt here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get just a bungee cord ready. Pull your brake caliper back. We're just gonna hang our caliper off here to the side for now. And we're gonna move over to our brake rotor to take off. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the brake rotor. Uh, to do so, we gotta remove this little safety uh, retaining bolt here. Uh, that's really just for an assembly screw for in the plant, but uh, it is nice to have on for the rotors. That way it doesn't fall off other times as well. Uh, it is a T30 Torx bit. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. Uh, first, I like to spray a little bit of penetrating oil on there and just let that sit for a minute. It makes that a lot easier to get off. Now that it's loosened up, you can go ahead and remove it. Now let's set that to the side and we're actually gonna use that with our new brake rotor. Now we're just gonna pull off 
And then I like to come into our hub here, and since we have it nice and exposed, with a wire brush, and just kind of clean everything up uh, before obviously we go ahead and put our new brick rotor on. And then grab our new rotor here, and slide it on into place. Hopefully your assembling screw or your retaining screw is close by. Grab that. Grab a lint-free rag, grab some parts cleaner. Spray down your rotor. And this is just to get all that assembly and transportation uh, oils and stuff like that uh, off the rotor. Uh, that way we don't have any sort of braking issues or bedding issues uh, when we go ahead and do that. I make sure I obviously reach around the back side like I was doing uh, to get the back side of the rotor as well. Now I can grab our caliper. Undo it from the bungee cord system that we had rigged up. Slip our one bolt in. Now we're able to go ahead and slip in our new Porterfield racing pads. And they will line up these pegs uh, with this hole here. So the, the, this is where that rod goes there. Rod, rod goes through it and then that 13 millimeter shaft will go across the center. Line them up. Before we put some of this brake hardware back, let's go ahead and hit it with some brake cleaner. No reason to put dirty hardware back in the car. And wipe these all down. No reason to be super thorough or anything or go over the top. I'm just trying to get the bulk of the, the brake dust and stuff like that that's on here off. Uh, it's wiped out. Let's go ahead and put that back in the car and finish our reassembly. We're going to go ahead and put back on this bracket here. Uh, you'll see that there is actually a little arrow uh, right here uh, with it pointing up. So this goes to the upside. Kind of need to do one pin at a time here. Slide it in from the back and line it up with that front hole. Make sure everything is centered. And then grab our bottom pin and then slide it through as well. And then you'll want to hit it from the back side uh, with just your helper hammer. And I like to use the back side of my punch, so nice dull edge. And drive those in. It's pretty, usually pretty audible. Uh, when you bottom it out, it kind of gets that dull thump, so that way you know that you're done and just and those pegs are driv driven home. So now we're going to go ahead and slide through our 13 millimeter shaft. And then tighten down that 13. Now that we wrapped up our front brake pads and rotors, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the rear set before bleeding the brakes. Moving on to the rear rotor and pad, we first wanna tap out our two pins here for our brake pads. Sometimes as well, you need a little bit of a longer tap uh, to be able to tap it all the way through. Grab our tabs here of our brake pads and compress against the side of our caliper, just like we did on the front, to compress those pistons in. And then slip out your brake pad. Next, moving to the back side of the rear caliper here, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two 15 millimeters that hold the caliper to the rear hub. So we're gonna go ahead and undo those and then move the caliper off to the side and hold it up with a bungee cord, just like we did at the front, so we can remove the, the rear rotor. Now we got our caliper hung out of the way. We are ready to remove our rotor. 
we want to undo our assembly screw here. It is a T30. Also remember, uh, regardless if you have a manual or an automatic, uh, either way, uh, make sure you have your emergency brake off. Make sure that your parking brake is off. Uh, your parking brake actually activates on the inside of this rotor, so uh, on both of the rears. So please make sure to check your parking brake uh, before you go ahead and try to remove it, or else you won't be able to get it off very easily. Now we're gonna go ahead and slide on our, our beautiful new racing brake rear rotor. Go ahead and put back in your assembly screw. And this doesn't go tight or anything, I just snug it up. Then undo your brake caliper here. Grab one of your bolts and slip it back into place. Line up that bottom bolt. There we go. Now we're gonna tighten down these 15 millimeters. Now we're ready to go ahead and put in our new Porterfield brake pads in our rear. They come with two sets of pads. Uh, two pads will look like this that have a tab here on one side. Uh, this goes towards the outside. This is the outside pad. And then the pad that has no tabs on it at all that is on the inside. Line those up with those holes. And then our bracket, we've already cleaned these as well with brake, uh, brake cleaner, as well as actually wiped down the rotor before we installed the rotor as well. We did not film that though. Uh, so now we want to go ahead and line these up. Oh, I like to slip in the top one first. Just kind of hold it in place. Line it up with our brake pad on our other side and into the hole. Now do the same thing to the bottom. Line it up, push it through. And then we'll go to the back side and tap these in. So that's going to wrap up our installation of our brake rotors and our brake pads here. Next, we're going to go ahead and bleed the brakes and then we're going to lower the car, put our wheels and tires on and take this car out for a drive and bed the brake pads. Our first step to bleeding our brakes is to locate our brake fluid reservoir here. Uh, we undid our cap earlier just to let it breathe so that way when we're compressing the caliper, but now let's go ahead and remove the cap and set it to the side. The tool that I like to use for bleeding my brakes is this Motives Products Power Bleeder. Uh, I, I like to use this on all my cars. Uh, it works fantastic as a single person operation. Uh, and so I put on this cap, and this cap is specific to GM models. Uh, so you do need to get it specific to whatever vehicle you're working on, if it's a BMW or a Mopar or a GM in this instance, uh, there might be a specific uh, cap uh, for your brake fluid reservoir. So you need to get that uh, specific style. Uh, and then they just use these adapters so you can just get the hose end uh, that fits your vehicle and then this pump will work for the same one. So now I'm going to pump this up to 10 pounds, uh, 10 PSI here, uh, which is just that second piece after um, you got the 0.5 bar here, it goes up to 2 bar or 30 PSI. Uh, we're just going to go up to 10 PSI and then start to bleed the brakes. Now the order of operation to bleed the brakes is furthest away from your ABS solenoid. Now our ABS solenoid on the ATSV is actually on our passenger side. Uh, so the first brake we're gonna do is our driver side rear, and then our passenger side rear, and then our driver side front, and then our passenger side front. So that's gonna be the order of operation. So we're gonna go ahead, pump this up to 10 PSI, start bleeding the brakes. So now we're at 10 PSI there. Uh, we're gonna let this sit like this, and we're gonna go to the rear and bleed the brakes. First step, remove these caps. Just set them to the side for now. And then I like to use this power bleeder. It's, it's a bleed bottle for them. Uh, I like it, it's really simple to use. It just hooks on. And I actually like to bleed the inside brake first. And it's an 11 millimeter, and then just break it loose. Look how dirty that fluid is. And close it up. Now I'm gonna do the outside of the caliper here. Uh, and I actually went to the front and had to add more pressure. Oh, look at all those bubbles coming out. 
and add more pressure because we decreased from our 10 PSI uh, down to about 7 PSI on that last one. So just keep an eye on that as well because you do want some pressure and that's what's actually bleeding the brakes. When you're done, give it a little wipe, get all the any brake, brake fluid that might have spilt. And then replace the caps. I'm gonna move on, do the other three, and then we'll wrap this up. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up the installation portion of the racing brake calipers, as well as the Portafil racing pads, as well as bleeding the brakes that we just did. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and put the wheels and tires back on the car, put it back on the ground and take this thing for a test drive. That way we can go through the bedding process. So you wanna get the car to run around 60 miles an hour. And then stay on the race to about 40. And then speed back up to about 60 and repeat. And do that about five times. Try to do it without cars around. That way no one gets freaked out at you if you're doing it on an open highway or anything. All right guys, so that's gonna go ahead and wrap up the installation of the racing brake rotors as well as the Porterfield R4S pads and giving the brakes a nice bleeding. So if you did like this video, feel free to give us a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button if you wanna see more content just like this. And just like that, I'm out. <laughs>